Kim will see Mary Kelly, and uh, uh, she'll get back to the right place and to them. So that's the 26th of July. Please remember that. Pray for this young couple. Uh, don't think there's any other news. We'll meet this Wednesday night. We mentioned that. If you have any needs uh, during the week, or you know someone who does have needs, if we've been in the week, uh, please let us know. The office or elder or deacon, and we'll try to answer those needs as best we can, uh, as we have an opportunity to do so. But please let us know. Uh, we will begin our worship today. Uh, again, we're glad that you're here with us. We'll have a script reading, and then uh, we'll have song service led by Paul. Our scripture this morning is found in John chapter 11, verses 25 to 27. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe you are the Christ, the Son of God, he who is coming into the world. In our saying with number 531. 531. Praise the Lord, he heavens adore him. Praise him, angels in the high, shining with joy before him. Praise him, mighty stars of light. Hallelujah, amen. 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 Teach 
sins so that we may have that opportunity, that chance, that hope of eternal life. Forgiveness of our sins, Father. We pray that we uh, never uh, take that for granted, that we always uh, always have that on our minds and on our hearts and we teach that to others. Father, we're thankful that we can meet. We're thankful that we are here uh, to worship you. Father, we pray that everything we do uh, will be pleasing to you. Father, in our song service, in our study, and everything, and everything, Father. We thank you so much for watching over us. Father, we, this uh, past few months has been very difficult in so many ways. Father, we're just thankful that you have looked after us. And Father, help us to always remember that you are in control. Father, that uh, uh, things so many times can be out of our control, but we know that ultimately, Father, when we look to you, that, uh, that we will be saved. Father, we uh, ask that you uh, be with the uh, folks around uh, this congregation, Father, that may be uh, going through tests, going through surgeries, going through difficult times. Father, we ask that you be with the Carter family as they go to visit the EMP uh, regarding Lydia's uh, CAT scan. Uh, this coming week, Father, we pray that uh, things will go well there and that the doctors will look after her. And, and uh, Father, we just pray for that family in general. Father, also we pray that you be with Sue's uh, son-in-law, uh, Daniel Beal, Father, as he gets ready to have shoulder surgery. Father, we just ask that you uh, be with the doctors and nurses that attend to him. Father, we also ask and are so thankful, Father, that you have watched after Chad. Father, he's had a tough time lately, Father, but uh, Father, through prayer and leaning on you, Father, the beers have, have uh, remained strong and we're so thankful that. Thank you that Chad is on the hand. We'll continue to be with him in the long days ahead, Father, and, and just continue to help him to heal. Father, we're so thankful for this congregation. Father, we pray that you will be with us as we uh, uh, look for a new minister. Father, be with the elders as, as we uh, look uh, that direction. And Father, help us. Father, bring us the right man that can bless us and that we can bless. Father, we ask that you continue to be with us throughout this service. In your son's name we pray. Amen. Let's turn to number 516. 516. One day when heaven was filled with this praises, one day in sin was the blackest to be. Jesus came forth to be born of a virgin, dwelt among men, my example is he. Living he loved me, dying he saved me, buried he carried my sins far away. Justified, really forever. One day he's coming, oh glory, I stay. One day they led him up Calvary's mountain. One day they nailed him to die on the tree. Suffering anguish, despising, rejected. Bearing our sins, my Redeemer is He. Living He loved me, dying He saved me. Buried He carried my sins 
uh, Lazarus and his death. And it's a story that actually takes several days to accomplish, to come to fruition. But as we look at it, there's no doubt that a lot of good comes from this particular happening. And the thing that brings us to the grave of Lazarus is just a small part of what Jesus experienced in his day-to-day -day living. You know, we all experience sickness in our lives. Sometimes we have good friends who are sick and uh, we feel for them, we care about them, and we hope that they get better. But I'm afraid all of us at one time or another have lost a dear friend too. And it happens. And uh, Jesus was no different in that respect. Uh, Lazarus was a friend. Lazarus became ill. Lazarus passed away. And it was uh, traumatic for the family. And we'll see that uh, it touched Jesus as well. By the time Jesus arrived, we know that he had been in the grave four days. And all that follows after that, simply here to remind us that uh, uh, what brought Jesus to the tomb of his friend Lazarus. There's a lot of things that happen in this that can both strengthen our own faith, but hopefully can change the opinion of others about faith and make it something that appeals to them. Romans 10, 17, Paul says, so faith comes from hearing and hearing by the word of Christ. And just imagine what it must have been like to be one of those 12 <clears throat> apostles handpicked and to be given these hard, fast reasons to believe. Every day, something new. Every day, something is said by Jesus. John eleven fifteen 15 tells us uh, uh, that as they prepared to go to Bethany, uh, they had received a message first off in the beginning of chapter 11 in the book of John. And it talks about Lazarus being sick in Bethany. And it was Mary who anointed the, the Lord with ointment, wiped his feet with her hair, and uh, just to kind of set the stage for who she was as well. But it's her brother Lazarus who is sick, and the two sisters, therefore, have sent word to Jesus. They know he can do things. They know he's fully capable, and they're worried about their brother. And they appeal to him, saying this, Lord, behold, he whom you love is sick. Didn't even have to give a name. They, he would know who it was talking about, what they were talking about. When Jesus heard it, verse 4, he said, This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God may be glorified by it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. When therefore he heard that he was sick, he stayed then two days longer in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to the disciples, Let us go to Judea again. And the disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now seeking to stone you, and you're going there again? He'd been in danger once and got away, and now he's going to go right back to the same place, and they're concerned about that. But he answered, he says, Are there not twelve hours in a day? If anyone walks in the day, he does not stumble because he sees the light of this world. But if anyone walks in the night, he stumbles because the light is not in him. This he said, and after that he said to them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I go that I may awaken him out of his sleep. Now this kind of confused them. The disciples, verse 12 says, uh, said to him, Lord, if he's fallen asleep, he'll recover. All he's got to do is wake up, is what they're thinking. He had spoken of his death, but they were thinking he was literally talking about just plain old sleep, that he would wake up. And finally, he tells them plainly there in verse 14, and says to them, Lazarus is dead, and I am glad for your sakes that I was not there, so that you may believe, but let us go to them. That was his whole intent. Uh, it was for the sake of the apostles that he, that he waited, and it was for the sake of all of those who were going to be present when this miracle takes place as well. But he says he did it for another reason, so that they might believe. And uh, what he's about to accomplish, if it doesn't make a believer out of the person, I don't know what would. But believing has to be a part of our daily walk, doesn't it? If we don't believe, we don't have anything to look forward to. 
two. You look at uh, Hebrews chapter 11, the first part of verse six, it says, without faith, it is impossible to please him, meaning God. But Jesus does not preach faith only. That is not his message. There's more to it than just faith alone. He also taught the ones who, uh, others who were with him, that they needed to, in addition to faith, to be somebody who followed him. And then thirdly, this is an important one here, he wants his believers to finish the course, finish the race. He called on his believers to follow him both literally, figuratively, and spiritually. Uh, if you take a look at uh, John 11, verse 15, uh, now he tells his uh, apostles that uh, let's go with him, let's go to him, let's go there. And it's interesting when he says this, you remember doubting Thomas, well, that, that came later. At this point, Thomas is up for just about anything. And when he says, let's go, and uh, that Jesus, that uh, it's time for them to go, even knowing what happened before that people were trying to kill him, Thomas was up for it. And this is how he answers that. In verse 16, Thomas, therefore, who is called Didymus, said to his fellow disciples, let us also go that we may die with him. He didn't want Jesus to die alone if that was going to happen. He wanted him to have somebody with him. And they were all going to go with him. So they move along. And uh, following Jesus seemed to be a pretty commonplace thing for this hand-picked dozen that was with him. Uh, they followed him through thick and thin. And faith was... Uh, and following was not going to be enough in this particular case. There was a third mark that would determine uh, who was going to be with Jesus, and this mark was that of finishing. There's a couple of places uh, that uh, people talk about finishing, and uh, both of them happen to be from the Apostle Paul. But if you look uh, forward a little bit to the book of Acts in chapter 20, this is an instance where Paul has been out on a missionary journey, and he is getting ready to leave and move on down to another location. And he is saying goodbye to some people in chapter 20. He is saying farewell to Ephesus. And you get down to verse 22. He says to the people of Ephesus there, and now behold, bound in spirit, I am on my way to Jerusalem, not knowing what will happen to me there, except that the Holy Spirit solemnly testifies to me in every city, saying that bonds and afflictions await me. So he kind of has an idea of what's waiting for him. But I do not consider my life of any account as dear to myself, in order that I may finish my course. He understood what Jesus was talking about. Paul knows you've got to finish the course. You can't just go halfway. And uh, to testify solemnly of the gospel of the grace of God. And then again, Paul talking over in the book of 2 Timothy in chapter 4 there, Paul says this. In 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses uh, starting in verse 5, Paul says, But you, be sober in all things, endure hardship, do the work of an evangelist, fulfill your ministry. For I am already being poured out as a drink offering, and the time of my departure has come. I have fought the good fight, I have finished the course, I have kept the faith. In the future there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day, and not only to me, but also to all who have loved his appearing. So Paul grasped that. He knew that uh, this was not something you did for a little while and then you quit. You were in it for the long haul. You were in it until the end. And even towards the end of the Bible, in the book of Revelation, John mentions something about this as well. John chapter 2, verse 10. Do not fear what you are about to suffer. Behold, the devil is about to cast some of you into prison that you may be tested, 
and you will have tribulation ten days. Be faithful until then, and I will give you the crown of life. No matter what happens, stay the course, stay faithful, keep moving, and you will have your reward when that time comes. So the death of Lazarus now brings Jesus to Bethany, and his death would be the item that leads Jesus into uh, the teaching of this special I am. And that's what we're going through here. It's all of the various I am's that Jesus mentions in the book of John. When Martha knew that Jesus was near him, down in verse 20, she went out to meet him. She knew he was there and uh, approaching, and so she goes out to meet him. Verse 20, we picked up the story there. Martha, there, uh, Martha, therefore, when she heard that Jesus was coming, went to meet him. But Mary still sat at the house. Martha, therefore, said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Those words had to hit Jesus a little bit. But yet he knew what was going on, and she didn't. So... He knew that uh, this was all going to work together for good. And to even uh, express her faith more, she says this in the very next verse. She says, even now, I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. She's got faith that Jesus can do whatever it is he needs to do to help her brother, even though he's dead, even though he's been in the grave now for four days. So... Uh, Jesus tells, tells her this in verse 23. He says to her, your brother shall rise again. Well, she takes that a little differently, and she answers back to him and says, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. She's picturing something totally different. She doesn't realize that Jesus has plans for today. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me shall live even if he dies. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, yes, Lord. I have believed that you are the Christ, the Son of God, even he who comes into the world. And when she had said this, she went away and called Mary, her sister, saying secretly, the teacher is here and calling for you. And when she heard it, she arose quickly and was coming to him. So those are the plans. Jesus tells her he is the resurrection and the life. Uh, he hasn't completely made the journey all the way to where Lazarus is at this point. And uh, then Martha leaves Jesus and sends Mary to him. And it's interesting that the words Mary says to him when she meets up with him. She comes to him in verse 32, where Jesus was. She sees him. She fell at her feet, saying to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not be dead. Virtually the same thing that her sister said. They both knew that Jesus had the capability to save his life. And when Jesus therefore saw her weeping, and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in spirit and was troubled. And he said, where have you laid him? And they said to him, Lord, come and see. And then everybody likes to say, this is the shortest verse in the Bible, but it is such a, such a word verse that is full of meaning because it simply says, Jesus wept. Jesus had feelings. Jesus had compassion. He knew what it was like to lose a loved one. And the Jews were saying, behold how he loved him. They thought, he's crying because his friend Lazarus has died. No, it was because he had compassion on all those around there that were upset that Lazarus had died. That's what he was doing. But of course, Everywhere Jesus goes, you know there are going to be the naysayers that follow along and try to catch him at something. And that's true even today at the funeral uh, after, after Lazarus has been laid to rest. Verse 37 says, But some of them said, Could not this man who opened the eyes of him who was blind have kept this man also from dying? <clears throat> Jesus was good enough to restore sight to somebody. 
Couldn't they have kept him from dying? And they were trying to cause a little bit of trouble as a result of that. Jesus, therefore, again, verse 38, being deeply moved within, came to the tomb. Now it was a cave and a stone was lying against it. And Jesus said, remove the stone. Martha, the sister of the deceased, said to him, Lord, by this time there will be a stench, for he has been dead four days. She's saying, are you sure you want to do this, Lord? Because he's in there, but he's been in there for four days now. And uh, uh, he, uh, he says yes, and uh, they, they go ahead. And verse, uh, uh, the verses following that tell us uh, what happens after that. Uh, Jesus would place all three marks, faith, following, and finishing, in one basket now with what he accomplishes. He looks at her and he says to her, did I not say to you, if you believe, you will see the glory of God? And so they removed the stone and Jesus raised his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou heardest me and I knew that thou hearest me also, always. But because of the people standing around, I said it, that they may believe that thou didst send me. And when he had said these things, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he who had died came forth, bound hand and foot with wrappings, and his face was wrapped around with a cloth. And Jesus said to them, unbind him and let him go. So he tells Martha, didn't I tell you that if you have faith, you would see the glory of Jesus? He says a prayer. He calls for Lazarus to come forth. And what happens? He does that very thing. No wonder he wanted to go to Bethany. No wonder he waited because he had something to show these people, something to illustrate to these people how important it was to go the distance and to not lose heart and to continue to remain strong. Everyone may not have believed what they saw, but nevertheless, they saw it. They saw what Jesus was able to do. And the point of this whole story is that everyone saw that Jesus truly was the resurrection and the life. Well, we know the number one thing that Jesus wants us to do is to run the race, and not just halfway, all the way. In other words, we don't ever retire from being a Christian. We are Christians until the day we die. We do what he wants us to do. Jesus himself, talking about uh, this very thing as he comforted his disciples in uh, chapter 14 of John, put it this way. He said, let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many dwelling places. If it were not so, I would have told you, but I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also, and you know the way where I am going. Finish the race. Lastly, one of the people I admire so much in the Bible that always concentrated on finishing the race, uh, the Apostle Paul. It's what he had to say in 1 Corinthians chapter 9. It begins in verse 24. And he's talking about running that race and finishing the race. Verse 24. Do you not know that those who run in a race all run, but only one receives the prize? Run in such a way that you may win. And everyone who competes in the games exercises self-control in all things. They then do it to receive a perishable wreath. But we, you and I as Christians, an imperishable. Therefore, I run in such a way as not without aim. We know what we're running for. We know where we're running to. I box in such a way as not beating the air. I'm not shadow boxing. I know exactly what I'm doing, and I know exactly where I'm headed. In verse 27, he finishes the thought and says, But I buffet my body and make it my slave, lest possibly, 
way after I have preached to others, I myself should be disqualified. Bottom line, run that race, never quit, and finish that race. Doesn't matter how long it takes, you just need to keep going and finish the race. This morning, if you have not come to Christ yet and you would like to begin to run that race, you can do that this morning by putting on Christ in baptism. If you have any other needs in your life uh, that you want someone to pray for and uh, to make the congregation aware of so that they can do so likewise, we invite you to come as together now we stand and sing. Jesus is standing in my words fall. And this forsaken betrayed my all. Mark it what be the concern call. What will you do with Jesus? What will you do with Jesus, my friend? The control you cannot be. Someday your heart will be asking, oh friend. What will you do with me? Jesus is standing on time still. You can be false to him if you will. You can be faithful through good or ill. What will you do with Jesus? What will you do with Jesus, my friend? Neutral you cannot be. Someday your heart will be a single friend. What will he do with me? Jesus, I give you my heart today. Jesus, I'll follow thee all the way. Gladly obeying me where you say. This will I do with Jesus. What will you do with Jesus, my friend? Neutral you cannot be. Someday your heart will be asking, old friend, what will he do with me? Please like this. We're going to offer the Lord's Supper after we sing number 440. 440. My Jesus, I love thee, I know thou art mine, for thee all the folly of sin I resign. My gracious Redeemer, my Savior art thou. If ever I love thee, my Jesus is now. I love thee because thou hast first loved me and purchased my pardon on Calvary's tree. I love thee for wearing the thorns on thy ground. If ever I love thee, my Jesus is now in mansions of and in blessed delight, I'll ever adore in heaven so bright. I'll sing with a glittering crown on my crown. If ever I love thee, my Jesus is now. Before we begin the voice.
will suffer. Is there any eater that need one of the uh, cups? Excellent. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this day that you brought us. We thank you for the rains. We thank you so much for everything that you blessed us, up, blessed us with in life. Father, we thank you for your Son that you sent to die on the cross for our sins, so that way we may have a hope with you in heaven. Father, as we partake of this unleavened bread, we, we pray that you be with us to help keep our minds focused on his body that was you know, laid on that cross for our sins. It took so much abuse for us, so that way we could have that hope in heaven with you. Forgive us our sins, Christ our Lord. This wonderful day we can meet in your house. Please help us forget your son when he died with drunk shed the blood on the cross of our sins. Let us not forget that's what this cup represents. Please let us take it. Matter is beautiful to you in your name. Father, we come before you once again to, to express our appreciation for being a part of this nation, to be able to go and earn livelihoods, to be able to support our families, to be able to pay forward and put back towards your, your mission here in Shawnee and in this world. Father, and as we are blessed, then let us also bless let us also put forth some of what we've made, some of what we've earned to be able to further support these missions to this uh, dear word, Father. May those who give do so with a cheerful heart. Christ, we pray. Closing song be number 679. 679. Closing one Dennis will lead us in prayer as we sing this song. Let's stand together, please. We are. 
one in the spirit. We are one in the Lord. We are one in the spirit. We are one in the Lord. And we pray that our unity may one day be restored. And they know that we are Christians by our love, by our love. Yes, we'll know we are Christians by our love. We will walk with each other. We will walk hand in hand. We will walk with each other. We will walk hand in hand. And together we'll strengthen the news that God is in our land. And we'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love. Yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. All praise to the Father from whom all things come. And all praise to Christ Jesus, his only Son. And all praise to the Spirit who makes us one. And they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love. Yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. And Father in heaven, we thank you for the privilege we've had of being here today. We're thankful for the message, for the gift of your son, for his resurrection, for the blessing that is ours to follow him, to be your children through him. We pray that this week may be one that shows our faithfulness to you, that we will be people who praise you and our Lord in every where we go and all the things that we do and that we say. We pray, Father, that other people will be influenced by our lives, that they will know that we are Christians by our love that we show for one another and that we show for all the world. They don't always know it, but we pray that you will help us to reveal the love of God through the gift of his Son. For the privilege of worshiping you and praising you and the observance of the Lord's Supper. We pray that as we go from this place that we may do so in your care, in your keeping, that you will help us to be a blessing to others. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, God.